Hi. Okay, today we are going to take a look at this Logic Cube Right Protect. Now, this thing is actually missing a piece. I mean, it's not a very important piece for this uh, video. Uh, normally, there is a small parallel ATA cable that sticks out of the case here, like that. Plugs in inside here. And I don't have that installed because I don't remember why I unhooked the wire but for some reason I, I took it out. I don't know why. Uh, you may have noticed that this video is in 4K. 4K. I switched cameras and uh, this one happens to do 4K, so might as well shoot 4K. I get a whole hour and 20 minutes worth of video on a 64 gig card and probably 10 minutes worth of recording time with the battery. Uh, another improvement is I have added something else, a little nice LED strip up above. Uh, well, actually it's a dual LED tube fixture and it provides a lot more even light. Because one of the problems that I always noticed and what always bothered me in the videos was that the outsides were always very dark because I have a, uh, a high powered LED light above me that I can move around, but I had nothing evening out the picture so I had like this weird vignetting effect and it looked very strange but uh, let's get into this enough about cameras because far be it for me to talk about anything other than electronics because that's the end of the world so um, this uh, this box basically just blocks writing to a drive now it can interface either with the uh, parallel ATA or USB uh, it takes a normal DC in uh, 12 volts. It probably takes less than that too, but uh, I happen to have 12 volt. And as you can see, it powers on and there's no backlight on this, so it's a little difficult to read, but uh, basically you can switch between USB mode and direct mode. Direct mode does not have um, the protection. From what I can tell, I, you may be able to engage it, I don't know. But <laughs> I couldn't get it to work on USB mode, like plugged into my computer, it doesn't even um, communicate with it. So I don't know what the deal is. I had a hard drive hooked up to it and it didn't work. So this is just standard parallel ATA connector. I had one of those. Hard drive, parallel ATA. Yep. And uh, I also had, hang on. <laughs> it uses a Molex connector and it needs a funky wire. This is probably just because, um, just to make this part cheaper. Uh, just because you don't need any kind of custom uh, one of those like square four pin connectors from the previous uh, logic cube stuff we used so uh, Yeah, basically I have this splitter that normally you'd use to split to uh, one drive into two uh, for power But uh, you can actually just use it to plug in here and plug into the drive and it just sends power along but even with that, this thing did not work, so I could not get it to do anything. And uh, in the menus, you basically get um, some diagnostic codes. And that's about it. You can just switch between the diagnostic mode, and it's even saying no link. Oh, maybe that's just because I don't have a drive hooked up. Oh, link okay. There you go. <laughs> but either way, I can't get it to do anything on my actual computer, so uh, we'll see. In the future, maybe I can get that working. I did want to make a video of it. But this uses just kind of a standard uh, project box style case. It's a uh, metal. And it's rather nicely built, like most Logic Cube stuff. Although uh, I have been in this a couple times and I think that screw is thread um, stripped. So I'll have to give that one some special attention. Now I'm noticing that my mic levels are peaking an awful lot. I don't know, maybe the, uh, I'm using a Sony camera instead of a Canon now. Maybe it's a little more sensitive to uh, voice level changes. I'm not sure. We'll see what it's like in post. Maybe I'll have to do a voiceover for this entire video, which would be kind of annoying. Okay, so this is one half. Now these use just kind of a standard uh, plastic bezel and little metal end cap. And, oh, <laughs> I guess that screw was so screwed up it wasn't even inside the uh, <laughs> the other end. So there you go. As you can see, it kind of bows out. Like, it's not straight inside the case, which is a little weird. And I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. I think it was like that. In fact, it's very rigid. 
So um, I don't remember what the reason for that is. So uh, yeah, the little bottom plate comes off and you can already see that there's a uh, DC to DC converter of some type there. And we got some nuts here. So I am going to track down some pliers and take these off because I don't think I have a nut driver that'll fit in here. Oh, okay, I finally got the board out. These have little standoffs and screws that go into the, well not screws, they're just like molded into the, riveted into the plastic or metal. And uh, there's a little clear plastic window on the display. And we've got some buttons, which aren't really buttons at all. They're just openings for the focus. Ooh, pretty quick. Uh, for the long tactile switches that are inside the case. And you can see that this display is just on some foam and just plugged into a header. So this may be a little dangerous to get out. It may not survive the uh, uh, disconnecting. We'll see, it depends on what this foam is like. And it also moves around a bit and stuff. And I've noticed that on the couple times I've taken this apart, sometimes it like sinks in and doesn't quite get to the right spot. So um, yeah, it's a little weird mechanical construction. Usually uh, you would use one of the standard like character uh, displays. And they would have um, they have screw holes so you can attach it firmly to the the uh, chassis, but this particular one is just a bare LCD, so it's a little weird. You got this little uh, three millimeter blue LED, which is surprisingly not too bright. It is clear. I figured maybe this is um, cutting off some of the light because these things are usually ridiculously bright. But you can see the internal uh, parallel ATA connector that ran out that little gap right here and uh yeah let's uh see if we can get this thing off without breaking it after a little while i did eventually get this thing off uh i chipped the glass a little bit but it shouldn't matter and bent the pins a little bit but this is a real pain in the ass to get off Man, I start to record this and my uninterruptible power supply starts going crazy and beeping like crazy. Ugh. So you have to change the batteries in it. Anyway, uh, we have this Lattice PLD over here, which is an ISP LSI 5256, 5256, yes, <laughs> VE. And uh, it's a 3.3 volt up to 165 megahertz version with a 12K PLD gate. So it's fairly beefy for its size and it's got um probably all the data going through it and just some memory to support it over here is a ubicom uh, microcontroller an sx28 ac i've never even heard of them before but uh yeah it's basically a little microcontroller and that's obviously driving the display because the display just connects to this row of uh this pin header here it's got a small clock crystal there can't read it through the monitor. It's probably like 10 megahertz or something. Eh, switch to the macro lens, give that a try in a minute. And uh, over here is just a Cypress um, CY7C68310, which is just a standard USB 2.0 to ATA bridge. You know, nothing special. And uh, yeah, the rest of this is really just power stuff. These are probably all providing the 3.3 volt rails. And uh, I said you can probably run this thing off 9 volt or something. And I, um, the only DC to DC converter in here is this uh, Power uh, Trends 5.25 volt one, which uh, can output two amps, but uh, there's no 12 volt circuitry, no boost converter, so it must run on 12 volts because for a hard drive, you need both 12 volts and five volts, although Serial ATA also uses a 3.3 volt rail. Um, to the best of my knowledge, nothing really uses it though. So uh, yeah, you have to use a 12 volt adapter on this thing. And uh, yeah, it's just got this uh, this um, DC to DC converter providing the five volt rail. And I don't know if they're pulling the uh, the, the lower voltages for all the, the control circuitry off that. But uh, yeah, it's essentially just a DC to DC converter and some uh, some soft, uh, software inside the uh, the lattice to get the, uh, or the inside the microcontroller and, the, and you got the lattice to do the uh, write blocking. I've said in a previous video that these things do actually show the OS at, that it's writing 
and uh, it, it appears as a read-write device, even though it's not actually writing anything to the drive. It, it essentially fakes it. So, um, you know, they do some magic in there to, to make that happen. So, uh, yeah, pretty simple board. Um, I wanted kind of a simple, <laughs> simple teardown to start off with my new camera as I fiddle with all of its settings and try and get this thing to uh, shoot properly. But either way, uh, let's try out the uh, macro and see what we can see on this thing. What's weird is this appears to be a 30 megahertz crystal. Now, usually when you have a USB controller, if this thing wants to show its text, stupid laser marked stuff, um, <clears throat> usually when you have a USB 2 controller, you want a 12 megahertz crystal on the board somewhere to provide the uh, 12 megahertz clock for the USB. Uh, it's possible this thing um, just provides it internally. So, uh, you know, there's no need for the uh, higher speed, or sorry, the set frequency, and it can just run off a higher speed. But um, usually in devices like this, it's 12 megahertz, so they can run the microcontroller and the um, USB 3, or sorry, 2 off uh, the same clock saving apart. But uh, like I said, I don't really see a 12 megahertz part on here, so it's probably generating it internally. And uh, yeah, we just got a couple big diodes and um, not much else on this thing. This is a fairly simple board. All of the data transfer in that and I'm not sure, oh my stupid um, 